Super Smash Bros. Brawl was one of my favorite games as a kid because it included the Subspace Emissary, an expansive adventure mode that featured most of the playable characters. You journey across the world of trophies, fighting enemies and bosses as you attempt to stop the evil Lord Back Tattoo from sending the world into the void. Normally, to traverse the levels you are expected to jump, but that sounds a little bit too casual for me. What if I were to beat the entire Subspace Emissary without jumping? Now, you might think, whoa, 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 wait a minute, Andy. Nathaniel Scuttlebug Frame Perfect Positioning Jumpless Bandy already completed this challenge. Why are you copying him? Simple. I'm not a casual. I don't know about you, but since I was a kid, I always saw up specials as jumps. So for this run, I'm going to try and complete the subspace emissary without using the jump button or up specials, and trust me, the run is way different and easier than if up specials were allowed. Before we begin, it's important that I define the specifics of the run. First off, I'm not allowed any jumps that can be made using the jump button. We can make sure of this by going into the game settings and changing all of the buttons that are used to jump to do something else. Additionally, I'm not allowed to use any up specials, which lay people may know as up bees. Because I still wanted to be able to point my control stick up, I just reset the stage anytime I accidentally used an up special instead of remapping my entire controller. Other jumps that were not allowed included wall jumps, edge jumps, glides, floats, and jumps that get a character out of water. The most important thing I did allow was any other move a character can do to get themselves in the air, which are usually the other specials. I also allowed myself to launch from minecarts, slide launchers, and from buried states, all of which I called ejections as they do not require the jump button to exit them. It may have been possible to avoid these, but I was already too far in the run before I considered it a conflict of interest. Another important point that I need to make is that this was played on an emulator, and I used save states, and I know, I know, that's pretty casual, but I'm a casual Smash player. My skill level in Smash is basically what you'd expect from someone who loved the game and beat all his neighborhood friends, but the second anyone with knowledge of competition level strats showed up, I'd be blown the fuck out. This channel may seem to be made with the purpose of causing me maximum suffering for your sadistic enjoyment, but it's really about overcoming challenges. So if I think it's worth cutting corners to save myself from wasting countless hours of my life, I'll do it if it doesn't cut into my standards. Also, if you're expecting some elite Mewtwo King level shit, lower your expectations, especially since I look even more like a casual in this video not being able to jump. Now that's not to say there's not going to be some absolutely fucked up strategies in this run, but I'm getting ahead of myself. With all that being said, let's get right into it. We start off the run with the duel between Kirby and Mario. It really wasn't that interesting. In fact, most of the fights between other characters and bosses aren't too much harder than a normal playthrough since they don't require jumping, so I'm just going to skip over talking about most of them unless they were unique in some way. The same applies to ambushes, which are parts of the game that force you to fight a number of regular enemies before proceeding. There were some special cases, and I'll bring those up when we get to them. The first boss I encountered was Petey Piranha, which was a unique battle because the princess I chose to rescue would be my teammate for a future level in the run. I freed Zelda for no particular reason and continued on to Skyworld. This is where the run really begins, as it involves actually moving through a stage. I started as Pit and are you fucking kidding me? I didn't expect to hit a literal wall in the first few minutes of the run, but here we are. Pit, the only character available for this section, has no moves to lift him off the ground besides a shield jump. Yes, I know I just said jump, it doesn't count, ignore it. A shield jump can be done with any character, but it doesn't allow any horizontal movement or input by the player, so it was useless for this section. However, there was an item box behind me, so I thought I may be able to get something useful from that. I made a save state next to the item cube and started reloading states to get different items. It's my understanding that the specific item spawned is dependent on which game tick the box is opened at, so attacking it at different times will produce different items. Here's the problem, you can't just get any item from a cube. The cube seemed to pull from an item pool that is specific to each individual cube, and this particular cube only produces soccer balls, smoke balls, Mr. Saturns, bunny hoods, super mushrooms, poison mushrooms, and trophies, none of which are any help to me. You can apparently manipulate the item pools by changing the difficulty, as higher difficulties will give less useful items, but none of the difficulties seem to change this specific item cube's pool. By the way, I played this run on normal difficulty, if you were wondering. I tried shooting this item box up here in hopes that there would be a different pool of items, but I only got trophies from this one. Death warping my way over didn't work either. I even plugged in a second controller to see if I could do anything with that, but there are only two interactions I know of that can happen between player characters. The first is the warping mechanic that allows player 2 to warp to player 1, but I couldn't manipulate this to get me over the wall. The second is the ability of the players to push each other if they are close enough together. I tried using this to glitch one of the characters above the wall, but it was futile. Also, I'm pretty sure footstool jumping isn't possible in Subspace Emissary since both of the players are on the same team, but even if I could use it, I'd have to use the jump button. There was one last resort that I thought might work. 
Pit does have a glide, and even though I wanted to avoid it, this violation would be less severe than using an up special. Unfortunately, you must jump at least once in order to glide, and it must be a mid-air jump. This means I couldn't just fall off a ledge and initiate it. I even plugged in a Wii remote and used the motion controls to see if I could bypass the jump function, but that failed too. I just couldn't figure out a way to get past this, so I guess we'll have to start adding to this mark of shame. This run was now a minimalist challenge, looking to determine the least amount of up specials needed to complete Subspace Emissary. Moving on, I fought some baddies and came to another obstacle. There was no way I could make it across this gap on my own, but now I had enemies to blast me to the other side. This is what I called enemy launching, and I used it to overcome about 75% of the obstacles in the run. In order to do this, I needed an enemy to be on screen, so I was always cautious about attacking enemies because I didn't know when I would need them. I also needed to watch my damage. If it got too high, I would just get blasted off the screen without any hope of surviving, but if it was too low, I wouldn't get enough knockback to clear most obstacles, so it was a delicate balance to maintain. Further ahead, I met up with Mario and used the invulnerable Jix to knock me across most of the gaps. I struggled a little bit with these rotating platforms, but all it took was a well-timed fall to get past them. I proceeded to the next level with Zelda and Kirby and oh give me a fucking break. There weren't even any item boxes in the area, nor any useful structures or enemies. There was nothing I could do with Zelda, Sheik, or Kirby, so that's another up special to the counter. The following segment was pretty easy as I just had enemies launch me through most of it. I used these boulders to get over a couple holes and it was on to the next stage. Aye, aye. Donkey Kong has no moves worth talking about, but Diddy Kong's size special has a tiny bit of upward momentum and a modest amount of horizontal movement that can be pretty helpful. I wasn't tall enough to get in this cannon, but I eventually found that I could just shield jump into it. After that was the plane, where I ran into a more significant obstacle. I got to choose between Pit and Mario, but I had pretty much decided by this point I was never going to use Pit again after the event in Skyworld. Near the beginning of the stage, there is a moving wall that travels across several gaps. It's possible to run fast enough to overcome the first gap with a ledge grab, but the second one is much wider. My first idea was to build up enough damage to get launched by this enemy, but the direction of the knockback wasn't in my favor. Maybe it could have worked eventually, but what I ended up doing was way more sick. I used Mario's cape to suspend myself in the air so that the wall could push me far enough to grab the ledge. It took a couple hundred tries to accomplish, mostly because Mario kept wanting to wall jump off the moving wall, but damn it was satisfying to finally get across. Remember when I said it was important to keep enemies alive? In ambushes, it can also matter what enemy you kill last and where you are when you do it. In this area, I had to be able to get over the ledge when the fight ended or I would be trapped behind it with nothing to boost me over. This trumpet ass looking ass over here kept frolicking out of range after I had beaten everything else. I was forced to redo the entire fight and this time I ended the ambush with Mario to the right of the ledge so that I would have no problem progressing. In the lake, I got to play as Fox whose side special was useful in clearing the gaps. Shortly into the level, I was transported into a dark room. You can get soft locked here if you use Fox, as the objective is to hit this bomb in the corner which is out of range of his attacks. However, if we put Diddy in here, he can grab his banana and throw it into the bomb, allowing us to skip using an up special. Unfortunately, right after that we run into another problem. There's no way to get myself up these platforms with Diddy or Fox without resorting to up specials. Although there is an item box over here, it only seems to spawn Maxim tomatoes. So that's one, two, three more up specials added to the counter. The following area was a bit tricky since I needed to get up here to hit this button. The problem was that these buculi only have one attack and it had set knockback, meaning it doesn't scale with damage, launching me the same distance every time. Luckily, the mites that spawn over here did have the potential to launch me up to the button, allowing me to progress. I spent a stupid amount of time trying to get this hammer bro to get me out of this pit and even more time waiting for him to hit me into this cannon. He kept jumping like a fucking idiot and wouldn't throw any of his hammers, forsaking both parts of his name. I eventually got launched and completed the level. Next was the Ruined Zoo. The part with the giant porky statue trying to eat my ass was pretty easy. All I had to do was survive as long as possible and make it to the end of that stage. At this section with the buttons, it's possible to just roll out of the way and let the statue open the gates. I had to make sure I had at least one stock left in order to death warp over this water, because I can't jump out of it. The next section had various spikes to propel me through the level, and the water was a death sentence unless there was an enemy to hit me out. Weird how the things that would kill me in real life are helpful in the game, and the thing I could survive, the fucking water Pokemon couldn't. 
but neither Squirtle nor Lucas had any moves to get over this wall. I tried baiting an enemy over there, but the area before is an ambush and there are no enemies after them. And the enemies immediately before the ambush get exploded when the ambush happens, and the enemies before that are just too far away. I tried taking this bird from the beginning all the way back with me, but it just wasn't feasible. There were spikes right next to the wall, but they wouldn't launch me high enough. In general, stage hazards like spikes and lava have a set knockback, so I couldn't keep letting myself take damage and expect more air. I did however learn that it's possible to continuously block the spike's quote unquote attacks. Not useful, but it was fun. I used Lucas's PSI magnet to give myself a little bit of height and a slower descent, but I didn't have enough horizontal momentum to get anywhere. I thought maybe, just maybe, I could glitch myself into this box, but no. Another up special added to the counter. Immediately after, I reached another gap that I couldn't cross without an up special. Squirtle was quickly descending the ranks to be my least favorite Pokemon, becoming useless in the face of water. Like, okay, I know you can't breathe underwater, but can't you at least do fucking something? <sighs> Immediately after that was an ambush, and it required a little bit of strategy. If you kill all these creepy pasta electrodes without thinking, you'll be stuck on this platform with no way to cross this gap. However, you only have to kill all the originals to end the ambush, not the clones they produce. After reenacting a warped version of the Prestige, I used one of the clones to launch me to the other side. The next stage with Marth was pretty easy, and shortly after his segment I was introduced to the best character in the run, Meta Knight. I mean, who else did you think it was gonna be? All of Meta Knight's specials can be used to gain height, with his side special being the best of the three. If Meta Knight was playable on a stage, I made sure to keep him through the entire level, as there were barely any obstacles he couldn't overcome. After using the SS tier character to make a mockery of this challenge, I moved on to the forest stage. Yoshi's down special can be used to clear some jumps, as it does have some horizontal movement, but he was completely overshadowed by Link. With his grapple, he can cross most gaps with ease, but not all of them. He had one other ace up his hammer space. If you watch Bandy's video, you'll know that throwing Link's bomb down will only launch you to the left no matter which direction you're facing. But I'm surprised he didn't think about the other ways you can utilize the bomb, or maybe at least he didn't need to. You can throw it up and position yourself under it, or you can hold onto it until it blows up, both tactics launching you in numerous directions. You can also throw it against a wall to launch yourself in the opposite direction. With all these different possibilities, Link became a close second to Meta Knight, and I basically blew myself up through most of the stage. The next character I got to play as was also one of the best characters in the game, and not just because she has a gun. Zero Suit Samus's down special flings her into the air with a really Really nice arc. There was a slight trick to using it as to land on fall through platforms I had to get myself out of the animation by doing a kick, but otherwise it's a great move and was actually really fun to execute. It can be used to bounce off walls, something it automatically does, but I thought this looked too much like a wall jump so I never used this mechanic. She also has a tether whip that can grapple onto walls like Link's claw shot, but I apparently forgot this existed for most of the run. You get access to Pikachu shortly into the level, but only his side special was useful and Zero Suit Samus was just so much better. There was one jump that was especially tricky, but I found the solution was just to initiate the down special while in midair. Besides that, the level was a piece of cake. Now it's back to Link. Of course, I resorted to bomb jumping. I had to build up my damage in a few spots to boost my knockback, which was really hard on some of the small platforms. After launching myself up, I came across three key doors that struck fear into my heart. The door I needed to get through was this top one here. I tried throwing the key into the door, but it just wouldn't bounce into it, and once the key stops bouncing, it disappears and respawns at its original location. I couldn't pull a bomb and launch myself while holding the key, so I had to throw the key up to this platform and launch myself up to grab it before it disappeared. I then pinballed the key into the door and finished the stage. In the next level with Lucas and Squirtle, I encountered the worst enemy of the run, the Gamaga. These guys are incredibly powerful, shooting lasers with delayed targeting, meaning that it fires in the direction of where you were rather than where you are now. This made predicting where it would shoot pretty difficult and in addition to that, I couldn't roll around it and most characters in the game can't launch themselves over it, including Meta Knight. I had to knock them down a couple rungs for characters that could launch themselves or completely destroy it with characters that can't self-launch like Lucas. This next section with the lava was probably the most infuriating part of the run. All these flaming jets have a set knockback, so I couldn't use them to get over the slabs. Even more frustrating was that these candlestick looking fucks that I needed to launch me would get stuck in a knockback loop in the fire. At one point, I got stuck behind this little wall while this shitcock did nothing but rub his belly. I had to restart multiple times to get the enemies in the right position to launch me. I even had to push one of them away from the flames myself so that I could progress. This passiveness and stupidity was likely due to the low difficulty I was playing at, so if one of you wants to do this run on intense, at least you won't have to deal with this bullshit. 
Shortly ahead, I got stuck in this room after an ambush. I had to reset several times until the enemies dropped a smart bomb, which I kept until the fight was over and used to launch myself into the adjacent room, which was another ambush. However, this time, the wall was much higher and these enemies only dropped healing items and other useless garbage at the end of the fight. I tried forever to get through this one without using an up special. Death warps weren't an option, but one thing I did try doing for a long time was timing this trackball to kill the last enemy after he had launched me into the air, the intent being that I would have enough height to clear the wall once the door opened upon its death. Unfortunately, even when delaying my fall with the PSI magnet, the time between its death and unlocking the door was just way too long. After over a hundred resets, I conceded another up special to the counter and... <sighs> I did try doing the battle before over and over again hoping I'd get an item, but nothing useful showed up. With the counter reaching such a high number, I was starting to get pretty demoralized. Hardest section of the run alert. The cave contained the most challenging parts of this run. After exploding my way through the beginning, I ran into the section with all these moving blocks. This was basically the same deal that happened with the Mario Cape section, but the walls were moving the opposite direction, so I couldn't use that technique. Though I had four other characters, none of them had any moves that would help me out, so it was up to my boy Link and his endless supply of boom makers. There were three different configurations of moving stones that vary in what part of them is cut out, and if I got caught in the cutout while it descended into the ground, I would get squashed. I couldn't grapple any of the ledges, so I would need to launch myself through the cutouts and over these two gaps. It was excruciating. I eventually increased my damage in order to get better launches and found that the trick was to time the bomb to blow me up after I'd fallen down this pit. After more than 150 attempts, I made it past the first gap and save stated. The next gap miraculously only took me three tries to clear, and I was filled with confidence and determination. However, this stage isn't over yet. While bomb launching my way through the level, I confirmed my earlier suspicions of being able to manipulate knockback direction. You see, if you make a directional input during the freeze frames of an attack, you can influence the direction in which you are knocked back. This technique is known as Smash Directional Influence, or SDI. Because Link is able to create his own knockback, he is much more versatile than the other characters that have to depend on enemies to launch them. This fact, however, made me paranoid that if I lost Link, I would be faced with a challenge that couldn't be overcome by the other characters, forcing me to restart from a much earlier save or even the beginning of the entire level. This resulted in me building up so much damage that I started to have problems getting through the level without launching myself into oblivion, which is what happened in this room with the Koopas and the moving platforms. The only way forward was to get the bomb to explode right above the level boundary and SDI in a direction that would send me high enough to land on a platform, but low enough so I didn't hit the blast line. I tried using this technique I saw in a task where using the camera mode and zooming out super far seemingly prevents the character from hitting blast lines, but I later found out that it's only possible in Project M's debug mode. Also, it's worth mentioning that the camera's reaction time is inversely related to the amount of damage the player has, meaning that at high damage percentages, the camera moves extremely extremely slowly, increasing the chances that the player will hit a blast line and die. Anyway, after many, many tries, I successfully launched myself to the spinning platform wheel. Now I just had to launch myself again to the right, but it became obvious that Link's time in this stage had come to an end. I kept going too vertical and not enough horizontal when blasting myself. I did get to this moving platform by shield jumping, but after spending way too much time trying to get the perfect launch, I ended Link's tortured existence and formulated a plan to get across with another character. As Mario, I kicked off this Koopa's wings and pushed him onto one of the moving platforms. I then spent an agonizing amount of time building up damage, manipulating the Koopa to launch me to the right, failing, and then building up more damage and trying again. I had to make sure to elicit attacks from the Koopa at certain times because if he got too close to the edge, he'd just yeet himself off the wheel. I also had to be careful not to fall on him when I came back for more damage. After a stupid amount of attempts at different percentages, I finally got myself up to 190% and successfully launched myself to the next area. Following that, there were just a couple more enemy launches and I had completed the cave after an hour and over 500 deaths. Next, it was the ruins with Squirtle and Lucas. Man, every single level with them is a pain in the ass. Timing the mice to hit me over these moving blocks was a matter of pure luck, and the part with the spikes was also a headache. As I mentioned before, spikes have a set knockback, so you can't just rack up damage and assume you're going to get flung farther. Additionally, though I could stand on top of them, if I waited too long, I would get smushed into the ceiling. The solution was to launch myself all the way up using this cornet motherfucker, but he kept getting impaled by the spike so it took way longer than it should have. Once I finally got up there, I had to hit this switch to open the door. None of my ranged attacks worked, but I eventually managed to get on the spikes and survive getting smushed because the top of this spikes was spikes instead of flat ground. 
wait. I hit the button with the PK fire and progressed further into the ruins. The next issue in this stage was the area with all these buttons and fast closing doors. In a normal run, it acts as a fast paced section where you press the button and have to get through the door before it closes. Thankfully, it isn't really that tight of a window, but in my case, I can't jump up the first wall. The solution was to get this mellophone through these two doors and back to the wall where I could have him launch me. It was immensely frustrating. The first step was to push him to the door, which took fucking ages. The next obstacle was getting him trapped in between those two doors. Look how happy he is in there. Disgusting. I timed the opening of the door to match when he was frolicking in the other direction and got him to his final destination. Once there, I had to hit this button and get him to launch me through the next door before it shut. It took a long ass time, but I eventually got through it with the help of a mutated Pokeball. I had to do the same thing with these dickwads to get through the next gate, which was sickeningly tedious as I had to hit two buttons this time. After getting slapped in the face with balls for around 15 minutes, I finally made it through. Meta Knight was available in the subsequent level, so it was pretty easy. The only thing that gave me trouble was his arm ache, but I think I'm just bad at the game. After way too many deaths, I defeated it and moved on to defeat the boss. In the next level, I had the option to play as Link. You already know how it went down. The swamp with Fox and Diddy presented a couple of problems. Moving from ladder to ladder with Fox was pretty tricky, and the ambush here gave me a lot of trouble. Hammer Bros in general were just annoying to defeat, especially when I couldn't reach them. This vertical side-scrolling section was also pretty difficult, and I relied on death warps on most of it because I just couldn't make some of the gaps. Towards the end of it, I had to jump off a ladder, toss a banana, pick it back up, throw it into this bomb, and get back on the ladder in order to proceed. After getting Falco, the only other exciting things in the rest of the level were the large amount of precision spring launches I had to do and my use of the vines to get launched out of the water. Returning to the research facility, Zero Suit Samus made the beginning pretty easy. I got the suit and immediately felt a sense of dread from having lost my down special acrobatics. Suit of Samus still has the grapple, so it wasn't all that bad. One thing I should point out is that you can't chain the down special bombs to gain extra height, at least not like you can in Melee. Speaking of which, that was the first game I wanted to do jumpless, but it had already been tasked by Stingrays 110, so be sure to check out that sick video after this one. The section with the moving boxes was hell, and I spent 10 minutes trying to find the correct timing in SDI to launch myself. The Auto Lance added itself to my list of enemies, I tried for a real fucking long time to get myself over this wall with bombs, and I made it to the moving platform section. The goal was to launch myself up onto this platform over here using these robots from the Incredibles movie. It took a long time and I got really frustrated. You son of a bitch. On one attempt, I successfully got onto the platform, but the camera didn't catch up and I got delivered straight to the afterlife. I eventually got down and had to make one last easy launch to the door. In one of the rooms following, I was forced to fight this row turret by launching myself into the air with bombs so that I could do an aerial attack, as none of my other attacks seemed to be capable of reaching it. Then I got to this room. Neither Samus nor Pikachu had any way to clear this gap, so that's another up special to the counter. In the outside the ancient ruin stage, I played as Captain Falcon while completely ignoring the other spacefaring character. There are a couple of great things about Captain Falcon. Both his FALCON KICK and his side special can be used to travel across gaps, and they can be used in combination with each other to overcome other obstacles. The only difficult part about this level were the Gamigas that stood in my way. Glacial Peak allowed me to use Meta Knight, so it was just recoveries the entire way up. After that, I played a level of Snake, which lasted about two minutes before I met back up with Meta Knight. There wasn't really anything notable about this level. Shadow Goth Princess Alert, I repeat. Shadow Goth Princess Alert. After rescuing Peach and Zelda, I now face the stage that I had been dreading since the beginning of the run. How the hell would I get anywhere when there's no enemies and neither of my characters have useful moves? Peach does have her side special, but she doesn't gain any height with it. I didn't want to use her float to cheese this, so I racked my brain for any other possibility. Wait, hold on. I remember when I used to play this with my friends, I'd sometimes get other items when I used Peach's down B. Let's see if there's anything use- Oh shit, I can pull a babam out? That's really fucking helpful- Oh no. Oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my fingers. I swear, I pulled at least a thousand turnips, and there were several spots where I had to do this. The only thing I want to say about this is that if you're trying this run yourself, you can hold down the control stick and just keep pressing B instead of another button to throw the turnips. This makes it so when you get a different item than the turnip, you won't throw it, preventing you from accidentally yeeting a bomb like I did several times. 
After plucking all of Trophy World's turnips and single-handedly solving the problem of world hunger, I had an easy Samus level before running into a roadblock in the second part of the subspace bomb factory. I needed to break these blocks and jump to the top of this section to hit a button that was a requirement for opening this door, but Captain Falcon had no moves that could reach any of the blocks. I used Diddy to break the blocks with his banana like I had in previous levels, but now I had to find a way to get up there. What I did after about an hour of different strategies was use this rob to launch me up to the second row of blocks, and then I just threw an item at the button. A little further on, there was a moving platform I couldn't reach, but I just death warped to get past it. I did a cool juggling act with a key, and after a vertical side-scrolling section, I fought Meta Ridley, one of the only boss fights that took a little bit of thinking. As his health goes down, Ridley moves further and further to the left, meaning that to reach him, I had to get on top of this fin. Fortunately, most of the characters that have joined us in the earlier parts of this stage have some move that allows them to get themselves up there. After one or two tries, I beat Meta Ridley, and now it was time to bring the fight to subspace. Almost every character I played as before was now available to use in subspace, but you know there's only one character that matters. Obviously, there wasn't any problems. But, easy come, easy go. Tattoo uses Tramp Stamp Butterfly powers to turn all of the characters into trophies, but thankfully, some of the characters survived thanks to King DDD's brooches. And holy shit, did you guys know that DDD planned all this? According to the Smash Wiki, DDD found out about Tattoo's plans and predicted that he would turn everyone into trophies without leaving anyone to revive them. DDD created the brooches in order to circumvent this, and even gave up his own brooch for Peach. King DDD is the true hero of this story. I mean, I'm never gonna play as him, but isn't that crazy? Anyway, back to the run. The character selection I had wasn't the best, but it did have Ness. It actually went pretty well until I got to this part. I needed to get launched way up off the screen here, but my damage was too high and I kept getting killed, so I spent a lot of time respawning the enemies in the area prior and using save states to farm the food to heal myself. In hindsight, I probably could have just restarted the level and got to this part with less damage, but whatever. When I finally got up here, I ran into another issue, as there were no enemies to launch myself past these pendulum platforms. I killed Ness hoping I could death warp, but I just got Weege in the same place. Things weren't all that bad though. In addition to his side special launch, Weege can lift himself off the ground quite high with his Weege Cyclone. This got me through most of the level, but it was difficult in the areas with these glowing stairs. Once I hit the gold one, the others are on a timer, so I had to ascend pretty quickly in order to clear them. One particular set of stairs was incredibly difficult. I had save stated my way halfway through, but my computer lags when I create and load a save state, so I didn't make any more states in fear of running out of time. For this set of stairs, I had to press the button extremely fast. I'm estimating at least 8 or 9 inputs a second. To me, that's absolutely insane. Like, why would the max height have an input threshold that high? From what I know, not many people can mash that fast, and my max average is around 11 inputs per second, which I can achieve by flexing all the muscles in my arm in order to vibrate it. Not only did I have to do three of these jumps at near maximum height, I also had to make sure to angle the control stick in order to get some horizontal distance. If I didn't, I either wouldn't reach the stair, or I would just fall through the corner. I did at one point death warp to the door, but I wasn't going to let this challenge beat me, so I kept trying with Weege. Here's some live audio of the attempt. Why would you fall through, you motherfucker? You cock. Go, Weege, go! Fuck. No, fuck you. Yes, Weege, yes, Weege, no, you fucking green piece of shit. After 40 minutes, 300 tries, and a lot of cursing, I finally yes. made it across. Yes. My arm was actually sore for two days after this. It was fucking wild, man. In the next part of subspace, I only had Kirby to use, but thankfully I was just able to launch myself through the entire level. I rescued Meta Knight, made 200 attempts to launch myself successfully past this area, and had to time an ambush enemy to launch me into the air while it died so I could land on a platform that spawns upon its death. Now it was time for the final level, the Great Maze. This behemoth of a stage contains many of the previous areas with slight modifications, a plethora of bosses, and the ability to choose any character you've rescued. I picked Meta Knight, and the rest doesn't really matter. There are healing stations placed quite frequently across the map, and you can even switch your characters if you want to, but I never did. I used Meta Knight the entire time, and there's literally nothing worth talking about. It was all breeze. After clearing every area in the maze, I was able to face Tattoo, but not before adding one last character to our team. I actually chose Sonic as my first character because of his homing attack, which made it easy to attack Tattoo who moved above the ground for most of the fight. Other than that, I just chose some favorites over the course of the run that had some sort of aerial ability. It was a pretty easy boss fight, and it ended in Tattoo getting killed by a hothead despite numerous attempts to kill him with the Mr. Saturn. And that's it. 
Unfortunately, I didn't beat the subspace emissary without jumping- Hold the fuck up! Did you actually think we were done there? You fucking thought- You fucking thought I wouldn't be able to do it, but your bitch ass was wrong! This was nothing compared to the All Gwyn run. I made a new ultimate technique, motherfuckers! Sit back, because shit's about to get real. Before we get to the ultimate technique, let's clean up what we can of the up specials with some strats I picked up along the way, starting with the halberd. Zelda, Sheik, and Kirby don't have any way of overcoming this wall, but what if I got a different character in there? I restarted the playthrough and this time saved Peach from PD Piranha. You already know what I'm gonna do. I did have to redo one level as Peach, which was no issue, and the only other part of the game this decision affects is this boss fight, which I also redid. Another up special I cleared from the counter was in the research facility. I didn't know until after my first playthrough, but it is possible to switch back into Zero Suit Samus by inputting up taunt, down taunt, and up taunt extremely quickly. I used this to simply acrobat my way over the ledge that had stumped me before. What about the rest of the up specials? This is where the ultimate technique comes in. A mechanic introduced in Brawl was the use of stickers, which you can collect throughout the game, even the normal Brawl game type. These special adhesives give your character buffs to be used in subspace emissary. Most of them are related to stat increases like attack power or launch resistance, but there are a special type that allow you to start each step with an item. A step refers to any time your character is loaded into the game, whether by going through a door, the spawn at the start, or after a death. You can have a beam sword, a Mr. Saturn, and oh, what's this? I started to grind the bulldog sticker by setting all the items off except sandbags and stickers, used the special brawl to increase speed, and made a custom map to increase efficiency. I mapped the controls of player 1 and player 2 to the same buttons on the same controller and absolutely annihilated sandbags for over 5 hours. By the end of it, I had more than 600 different stickers and many, many duplicates, including a good amount of bulldog stickers. So let's start with Pit. Thankfully, you immediately start levels with the Babam, but I still had to rush over to the wall before it exploded. After a hundred attempts trying to shield jump and launch myself over, I finally cleared the wall by using a poison mushroom from the item box earlier. In the level with Diddy and Fox that forced me to use three up specials, I got Diddy's damage up, entered the Room of Darkness, and found out that tossing a banana doesn't throw the bomb. so I was able to free myself from this dark prison while hanging onto my ticket out of here. I rushed over and shield jumped to this platform and began blowing myself up in all different directions. In addition to SDIing, I had to change direction to mid-air quite a bit so as to gain a lot of height without hitting the blast line. The highest I ever got was this platform, but I was still determined to get out of this without using an up special. If you blast yourself high enough, you can spawn the hammer bro on the platform above. I was able to knock him to a lower platform with a banana, and from there I got him to launch me to the ladder. That's three more up specials removed from the counter. Moving on to Ruin Zoo, I got through this entire section with Squirtle, backtracked to drown him in what I saw as retribution, and death warped right to the problem area area with the ba -bomb. With a simple toss in the air, I launched myself above the step and decreased the counter by another point. In the following area, I used PK Fire to open the door and threw the ba -bomb into the wall to clear the other up special in this stage. Sticking with Lucas and Squirtle, I got these Nagagogs to low health, had them kill me so I could spawn a ba -bomb, made sure they did a bit of damage to me before I defeated them, and then launched myself through the now open door using the wall on the opposite side. Oh, and the jump after that? Turns out you can just death warp over. And that's it, for real this time. I had successfully beaten Super Smash Bros. Brawl's subspace emissary without using any jumps or up specials. Yeah, I think I'm ready for the tournaments. This run was a lot of fun, though I'm not really sure if that's because it really was or just because it wasn't pure suffering like my last run. But there are still things to improve on. I'd love to see someone do one of these modifications to the run, especially a task. If you have any ideas on how any parts of the run could have been done easier, leave them in the comments below. More importantly, leave comments on other runs you'd like to see, or what you liked or disliked about this video. If you want to see more runs in the future, subscribe and share my videos. Also, I'm currently streaming my GIFs only run of Code Vein, so if you want to watch me suffer in real time, drop on by. My name is Andy, and thank you for watching.